We'll see you through love and be the first to love and fill your heart with love and be about it love and sing a song about it love never doubt that love is all dimensional love now and always love is the shelter of love before and after love only love Only love Only love Ooh. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Let's give Jim some love. Yeah, yeah. And Cole. Ow! <laughs> Welcome to the Revealing Experience. We have a wonderful, wonderful experience, and I'm so glad y'all are here. I also have my mom with me tonight. Yes. Come, come. So on the way here, I talked her into singing some songs with me tonight, so. Yeah. <laughs> but we're gonna start off with our welcome song. So we're gonna welcome those still coming in and welcome those sitting beside you. Here we go. Come on in, we welcome, we welcome, we welcome you. Come on in, we welcome, we welcome. We welcome you, let go, be free, come on in and take a seat, we're glad you're here, we're spreading love, joy and cheer, so come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in, we welcome you, come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on in, we welcome you. Let go, be free. Come on in and take a seat. We're glad you're here. We're spreading love, joy, and cheer. So come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. We welcome you. Come on in. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in, we welcome you. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in, we welcome you. Come on in, 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 we welcome you. Come on in, 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 we welcome you. Come on in. <laughs> that was cool, Jim. That was totally cool. Where are you going, Mom? Oh, no, no, no. You like this feel, Brian? Come on back now. You got to sing the song you wrote. You know the song that we sing every week? She wrote it. So, reveal. So, yes. You just stay right here and we open our hearts and sing about what is already present, yes? Reveal, reveal the love inside of me. Reveal the love that I was meant to be. And every time I open up, love is what I see. Reveal 
the peace in me. The joy. Reveal, reveal the joy inside of me. Reveal the joy that I was meant to be. And every time I open up, joy is what I see. Reveal the joy in me. Reveal, reveal the love, the love inside of me. Reveal the love that I was meant to be. Every time, every time I open up, love is what I see. Peace. Every time I open up, peace is what I see. Joy. Every time I open up, joy is what I see. Reveal the love. Reveal the love in me. Thanks so much. I want to thank Bianchi and Cole and Sunny. And we have mother and daughter tonight. We have Sunny and her mother, Wendy Barnes. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. And for, for all that don't know my name, I'm Denise Harmon. And I got extra hugs today for coming up here <laughs> again. I had one that said, Oh, now you're getting more practice that you get to go up <laughs> there. So, so it's been fun, and, and I'm, I'm thrilled to be here today. I love the Wednesday service. I started out here over 11 years ago here in the Wednesday, uh, Wednesday service with uh, Tammy, who's here tonight, Reverend Tammy Mars. So we're blessed to have that. Right now, we're just going to go into that stillness. So let go of the day, close your eyes, be comfortable, and just be here, right here, right now, in this moment. In this beautiful moment of stillness, when I recognize God in each and every morsel, God is the spaces between the spaces. God is that unconditional love that surrounds and, and nurtures and comforts and brings all to that calm certainty. And I know breathing in that breath, I breathe in that breath of God right here, right now. And as I know this for myself, I know this for each one here, that God is within and as each individualized expression flowing through in thought, body, mind, and spirit. And I know that all that needs to be said through the beautiful words of Tammy Mars this evening and felt and sensed and known through the beautiful music here we have blessed with. And I rest in that, knowing that each one here is that open vessel is that open expression to hear exactly what they need to hear in each and every moment of this evening, flowing beautifully and touching each one here. And so it is. Amen.
And I have a reading here. It's a little low. Hello. <laughs> Can we bring it up a little? Oh, there we go. That's good. I like that. <laughs> okay. I have a reading here from Science of Mind book. Um, okay. Tonight's mes message, Reverend Tammy Marr's message tonight is the unexamined thought. So I chose something here from Law of Attraction, page 294, if people that want to keep note of the Science of Mind book. Um, since we are thinking beings and cannot stop thinking, and since creative mind receives our thought and cannot stop creating, it must always be creating something for us. What it will make depends wholly upon what we are thinking, and what we shall attract will depend upon that on which our thoughts dwell. Thought can attract to us that which we first mentally embody, that which has become a part of our mental makeup, a part of our inner understanding. Every person is surrounded by a thought atmosphere. This mental atmosphere is the direct result of his conscious and unconscious thought, which in its turn becomes the direct reason for and cause of that which comes into his life. Through this power, we are either attracting or repelling. Like attracts like, and it is also true that we may become attracted to something which is greater than our previous experience by first embodying the atmosphere of our desire. Everything which has ever happened on this planet has left its imprint on the walls of time, and could we walk down their corridors and read the writings, we should be reading the race history. This should seem simple when we realize that the vibrations of the human voice can be preserved on the receptive phonograph, disc, or the sound film and reproduced at will. There is a tendency on the part of all of us to reproduce the accumulated subjective experiences of the human race. And now I introduce, once again, we're blessed to have Reverend Tammy Mars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Wow, this feels good. Hi, you guys. My beloved people on Wednesday. You know, it's such an honor to walk the spiritual path with individuals, especially those that are, that are saying yes, because we all support each other. I wanted to start tonight's service with our gong. You know, the Wednesday night service started many years ago. It actually started in about 1998 with Reverend Diane Harmony. And at that time, she started it with her primary support being David Beardsley. And right around 2000, I came and would sit in and would do a one service a month for her just to give her a break. And then when Reverend Diane moved on, I inherited the Wednesday night service. And that was in the beginning of 2003. And David Beardsley was right there with me, and he was my co-creator. We had a love together for that deep spiritual gospel music. And the place that we found that in this teaching was through agape. So we wanted to bring that deep spiritual sense to the Wednesday night service. Well, today, um, David made his transition. And he actually bought this, this bowl for us to ring. And so when he was sick, it actually was 10 weeks ago that uh, we started noticing he was off balance and wasn't remembering really well. And we found out that he had a tumor in his brain that it was terminal and that he just had a period of time left. And he had me bring this bowl, which, which I had at my home, to his house. And when people entered, he'd ring it. And I heard last night that when they finally took his body to the mortuary, they rang it for him. So I just want to acknowledge him here. Can we show a picture of him for those of you that may not know him by name? David Beardsley. He's been at the church, done so much for so many for so long. 
So in his name, I'd like to start with three rings. I just invite you to just turn within, open your heart and send love to him and those that love him. Blessed be. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. So, you know, David did a really good job, meaning that he had always said in consciousness that how he wanted to go. He didn't want to be a burden to anyone, and, and he didn't want it to linger on, and, and that type of thing. And so it was really amazing as we watch this thing called death that a lot of us aren't familiar with or a lot of us are afraid of. And he did this so perfect. First of all, he was healthy, 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 healthy. He gets a diagnosis. He knows that there's really nothing he could do about it. He goes home. He allows many of us to visit and to love him up. Time for his family, time for everyone to come. And if you had an opportunity to see him, he sat in this space from the moment he was diagnosed. My husband, uh, Rick, Reverend Rick, took him to the hospital when we first were questioning some things. From that moment, he went into that space of gratitude, just incredible gratitude for the doctors and the tests and the nurse, and he just lived in that space. When people came to visit, what he kept saying is that, I just feel the love. He just felt it in his body. He says, I just feel it in my body. And this unbelievable thing is this, these massive surges of love. And, and, it, and when people came, that's what, that's what he experienced. And he felt it all the way through. You know, he never had an ounce of pain. Now, he did get impatient near the end. He's like, he had felt he had said his goodbyes, and he, he was saying to me, Tammy, you know, I just, I just am ready to go. I want to go. He was getting weaker, and it wasn't happening. And just like our dear David, he was impatient, but I, I can't say I wouldn't be either, you know. And I told him, David, w we wrote a prayer and just said that he will go in his sleep and with ease and grace at the perfect timing. I said, look what your God has done for you. Your God has created the perfect situation for you. You have no pain. You're able to say goodbye. Your God is not going to let you down. It's not going to let you down, David. Just trust that you're here for a reason. Uh, my husband Rick and I went to go visit him on Sunday. And David loved women, especially naked ones. He just <laughs> loved them. Loved them. And when you walk in his front door, there's this sculpture of a naked lady, right? A naked woman, you know, breasts and all poking out at you, you know? And so we joked about it with David and he, and the last day that I was there, he says, when I go, that's going to my, my, the mother of, he had five children, the mother of my five children, because she, that represents the womanhood. She created these beautiful children for me. She was pure womanhood. And, and we thought, wow. And so we started talking about about some people that have been in his life right now that are really loving him up and he had had periods of time where he wasn't real excited about those individuals but now they're showing up loving him up and Rick actually came to the conclusion he said you know what what happens is that we go back through our lives and we look at all of the situations and people and things that have occurred and we transform them to love and when you're complete, is there some way we can get rid of this echo? It's, okay. <laughs> and when you're complete, loving them up, David, then you'll release. And he said, that makes, that makes sense. And we did a prayer, and sure enough, it was only two days later. And he just went in his sleep, in peace, not an ounce of pain. So I think there's a lot for us to be learned here when we watch somebody in this time of their life. Because just as in birth, with the brand new baby and the birth that comes in, when we get to that part of our life, what I have known and what I have seen about life and about God is that 
Every single thing we need is right there. Everything. When we're stressed out, it's already built within us to go to sleep. When we are afraid, already built within us is something that brings us strength and courage. You know, if you look at your life, every single thing you've ever needed has shown up right when you've needed it. It's hardwired into us. And the same is true that I've found with those individuals that I've sat with that are making their transition. That at the end of life, this cleansing, if you will, kind of comes over. This powerful love kind of comes over all things. And, and the majority of the time, there's a, that, as the Bible says, a peace that passes understanding. A whole transformation happens before our transition of ourselves. And what we're doing is what we're talking about tonight is about we're, we're examining, we're looking at our unexamined thoughts. 100% of everything that causes us trouble, stress, pain, worry, confusion, anxiety, 100% of it is a thought. And so on the spiritual journey, the spiritual journey is about being awake and aware. It's about know thyself. Ernest Holmes says about 90% of that which we think is unconscious. And so this is a journey about consciousness, about awakeness, about being aware. And so if that is true, the one thing that we're really in touch with is how we feel. We know when we're not feeling in alignment. We know when things are off. And the universe or God or life will always, always answer us. But we must Take this situation, this pain, this fear, this anxiety, this doubt, and we must bring it to the forefront and ask the question. We must examine what thought is this, what belief is this that I am having that is creating this, this disturbance in my being. As the science of mind says, change your thinking, change your life. The Course of Miracles says a miracle is a shift in perception. If we can grab hold of what the thought is, if we can stop and, and, and ask the question and try to figure out what is the thought? What am I thinking? What is the story I'm telling myself? What am I projecting? Most of us are projecting something bad will happen or something in the future. What is it? And try to get a hold of it. And then simply ask the questions, is it true? Is it true? The very first thing we have to find out and the very first question we ask, is this mine? Does this belong to me? Or is this someone else's business? Or is this God's business? Whose business is this worry that I'm all worried about? Am I all worried or upset or something because I want someone else to do something that I have no control over? Or is this mine? Is this something that I can do? And so there's many methods of which we can examine our thought. Byron Katie has the one that has the four primary questions. Is this true? Are you 100% sure it's true? Or is there any percent of it that may not be true? And we look for that. And if it is true or even if it isn't true, how does this thought make me feel? And how would I feel if I didn't have it? Any thought and any subject and anything that we look at in, that needs to be examined, all of it has within it an infinite number of ways from which we can look at it. Abraham calls it reframing. So we take that which it is, we put the light on it, and we ask, what is this? And is this true? And reveal to me the truth. You know, we can do that also through prayer. What prayer does for us is we, we realize that we have an unexamined thought, we have a fear, we have an anxiety, we have something going on, and then we know the truth. And we use the five steps. God is. God is love, God is peace, God is wisdom, God is joy, and therefore I am that place where God makes manifest and God's infinite wisdom moves in and through and as my very being. And as that is so, I know that whatever the situation is that's bringing me strength, also is the place in the allness of God, the wisdom of God. It is right here, right now. I am open and available, ready to receive it. I had this incident recently, and this is kind of like a process that I've gone through. And um, my son, my son is 30 years old, 
And he loves motorcycles. It's his greatest passion in his whole life, motorcycles. There's nothing, well, now that he's in relationship and soon to be married, there's her, who's very he's passionate about. But he has a motor, he, he's riding motorcycles. So long and short of it is he's had two very serious accidents on his motorcycle. And each time he told me he wasn't riding anymore because I'm not a fan of motorcycles. So, um, and then two weeks ago, he calls me from the hospital. He had had gone down again and had another serious accident. And so it gave me an opportunity to examine my thoughts because the very first thing I went into was extreme anger. Um, but I really was angry because I was afraid. And I was really afraid because I thought that he could kill himself or hurt himself or something that could happen and I had no control over it. And I didn't know if I could handle the emotions of that and all of those things and a number of reasons. But I have literally spent probably the last two weeks asking myself the question, what is the truth here? Because I know that fear and anxiety and, and anything that's, that's not joy and happiness and flow is an unexamined thought. And there's something that's going on within me that could use some healing. So what is it? What is the truth here? What is the truth here? And I, I got the correlation that you know, he could have been one of these guys on the Olympics and the bobsleds or jumping off those big giant ski jumps or doing any of those other things that those people are doing. That, a lot of that is not a very safe sport. You know, you could get hurt on that. And, and here we are giving these guys medals for doing this stuff, you know? And I'm thinking, well, you know, it's not the motorcycle then. It's none of those things. You know, we could be looking at this completely different, you know, from, from where it's at. So... Anyways, the, my process of doing this is that I just ask. I just ask, what is this? What's the truth? And, and we've all been there. It's like, no, yeah, that's the truth. But no, you know, you feel it. When you click, you align, you go, ah, oh, I feel better. Oh, that's it. That's the truth of this situation. And long and short of it, I'm getting closer. I don't feel I'm 100% there, but I'm getting closer. And I came up with the standpoint that He's going through a stage of life of what he's doing. He's entitled to it, to live it and be whatever he wants. This is his stage. I've already been through that stage, and I'm sitting here in, in this stage of my life, which I'm 100% entitled to also. And so what that really did for me, setting that up, was let me know that this is his business and what he's doing, and he is separate from me. And whatever comes up, I am supported by spirit. I can handle all, you know, it's not going to ruin my life. It's not going to destroy my happiness. It's not going to be all these things that I'm afraid that it will be. As I mentioned, I'm not 100% there yet, but I'm getting there then. But the point is, is that any disturbance we have in our being simply is God telling us we need to sit down. We need to figure out what it is. And by asking and asking, is this true? What is this that's going on? To pray on it, to raise up to that higher level, and then to just, Ask until we receive the answer. And most of us are too busy. We don't take the time. We just kind of let it sit in there and then we get busy doing other things. So we have all of this unresolved work that's going on with us. But David was such a great example of that because here he is uh, pretty much unable to move, sitting there examining examining, examining this event that happened a long time ago, examining this relationship with his children and his wife, his, their mother, examining all of these things. And he chose to be in the space of gratitude and to be in this space of love and it just flooded and it just cleaned up and it just straightened out and it just took care of everything. So we don't need to wait until we're on those final stages for us to be able to do those things. We can literally now choose I'm in alignment and feeling good and flowing or I'm not in alignment and not feeling good and flowing. I have something that I need to examine. I have something that I need to question. I have something that I need to allow the universe to reveal to me and I will take the time and I'll stay in it. Now, I didn't just sit for two weeks and do with this. You know, I don't have time for that. But as I sit in the morning or as I do my walk in the morning or as I contemplate it, it was forefront. I had the intention that, I was, that I'm going to find this answer. And as Byron Katie says, she's not afraid of anything. You go immediately to peace. Nothing has power over you. 
It's no big deal, as Abraham says. It's no big deal. It's just an indication of where my focus has been. It's no big deal. It's just something that I need to clean up. I need to get in alignment with the truth. The truth is, is nothing has, is in charge of my happiness. Nothing except for me can choose that happiness. The truth is, is that whatever unfolds in this life, we'll have the strength, we'll have everything we need to handle it. We don't know what it looks like. We don't need to know what it looks like. It's all right here. Our job is to be awake and aware and to examine what we're thinking, our thoughts, and ask ourselves, is this really true? Is it true? You see, we're made up of this sum total of what I call quantum soup. So when you think about that, when you think of each of us as individuals, we are the vibration of God. And as we've been here on this physical plane, if something like we think like 2,000 thoughts a minute, and within each 2,000 of those thoughts, there is a vibration that's attached to it. Each of those thoughts have a vibration. And so when you think about if you have that many in a minute, you can imagine what your soup is made up of, what your quantum soup is made up of, right? It has all kinds of things. So we don't know why. There's really no reason to really know why. But the indicator is how we feel. And what we know, as in soup, that if it needs some salt, you just add it, and it'll salt the whole thing. You don't have to go back and fix every 2,000 thoughts every minute that you ever had. So the same thing is true with our life now. That if what we need to add or what we can add to our life is truth. What we add to our life is light. What we add to our life is a higher vibration. We do that through prayer. We do that through examining. We do that through knowing. We do that through loving. We do that by choosing peace. We do that by choosing joy. We do that by moving our body in such ways that activates that which is already present here. And it's just like it added more salt to our soup. It just fixes the taste of it. The taste of life, if you will. So... That is the journey. Uh, Byron Katie speaks about, about a projector. That that which we are seeing outside in our life, and David was a good example of that because David is love and joy and all those things, but quite frankly, David used to be a little cranky. And, and he used to, like, you know, get cranky with us. And we didn't like it, did we, Jeannie? <laughs> he was cranky. So, so, but it was so funny with David. Because with all of us, actually, another lesson, I call David my teacher, another lesson, because David was cranky when he wasn't feeling good. And, but the outside world just aggravated him. And he projected it to the outside world. But what really was happening is he wasn't feeling good inside. Maybe his, he had a hip that hurt him or he was beating himself up for something he did or didn't do or whatever it was. And Byron Katie uses the example of the projector. What, but what really is happening in the outside world that we don't like is really a projection of what's going on in our inside world. Another opportunity to say, what's going on with me? What am I really feeling? What's really happening here? Byron Katie uses the example of the projector. You know, we've all heard that before where there's something on the, the little the, um, screen or the, the, of the projector, but it's showing up on the big major screen. And a lot of people go out into their world and try to scrape it off the screen, but it's simply on the lens of the projector that we clean it off from. The same thing, we're the lens. We're projecting. We're everything we're seeing in our life is a projection based on our quantum soup that is so filled with that vibration. So we clean our lens by adding light, by adding love, by, by examining our thoughts, by choosing alignment versus unalignment. We clean our lens by doing that and our whole outside world shifts and changes. David, where he was sitting, he didn't see anything but love. You know, he wasn't cranky at all the whole 10 weeks. <laughs> he was just happy as can be, filled with love. I mean, he was impatient and had some other thoughts, but literally that was his lens. That was where he was coming in at, and that was a choice. And you don't have to wait till you're 80-something years old to have that choice or to have a clear lens. We have that opportunity right now by being awake, by being aware, by choosing love, by choosing our highest vibration that's possible. Ernest Holmes says this. 
He says, Ernest Holmes says, it's not our spirit that needs to be made whole. It's our mental reactions to life that need healing. Clean our lens. Prayer is not willing things to happen. It is to provide within ourselves an avenue through which they may happen. We clean it up. Prayer opens up the avenues of thoughts, expands the consciousness, and lets the truth through. It clarifies the mentality, removes the obstruction of thought, and lets in the light, and it removes the, d- the doubt and fear. It removes it because we say, make me an unobstructed vessel of the Most High. Reveal to me that which I need to know. We ask the questions of the universe, we ask the question of life, we ask the question of God, and you will get an answer if we just stay with it. And in that answer will come this peace that passes understanding, will come this joy, will come this powerfulness, will come everything that we need so that we line up. There's lots of evidence of it being so, lots of methods that are taught. What I want to leave us with is that truly, with an unexamined thought and the recognition that there's something out of alignment because I don't feel right, that all we can do is bring it back into it, examine it and look at it, shine the light of truth on it and keep asking till that truth, uh, that truth resonates as our truth and allow it to clean out and bring the joy into our lives. I want to close with a reading. You know, David, five years ago probably, planned his memorial service. He has for me a packet that has every single CD with every single song and everything that he wanted because he was concerned about that because his kids and those people didn't know. So he actually was going to create a business to help people design that for me. And he gave me this reading that he wanted me to share at his transition and his memorial service, but I just wanted to share it with you now because it's kind of appropriate. It comes from that um, the CD series called Graceful Passages, and this is called Walk On. It says, Good morning, Grandfather. I entered this life a ways back and put on skin and walked with two-legged on this creation. And what a glorious time it was. It taught me about breath and about sensing and feeling and caring through my heart. And I walked on around that red road, looking and trying to understand more about the mysteries and the secrets she holds. And you spoke to me through the wind and you sang to me through the birds and you brought me challenges forth so that I might listen to the message you bring me more sincerely and I kept walking down this road and I came round the bend at the middle of that curve in the road and I began to find a secret in the spirit of myself and still I walked on sometimes blind and deaf, and sometimes with pain. But I fought with my fears and I embraced my unknowingness, and still I walked on. And my children and my family stood with me. And we came to know each other in those later years more than we had before, for some of our falseness had fallen away. And still I walked on. And I kept walking on this road towards you, towards the other world that grew closer to me with each step. And as the door of the great spirit world came closer, my fear loomed up inside sometimes. But something called me forth. The morning star rose each day, and my prayer became a century, and still I walked on. Until I began to hear the song of the mother And her arms embraced me so. And instead of walking, she carried me right to the door. And as the door opened, I heard her song. And her song lifted me up so I could roar.
God bless you, David. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for him and sad for us. So it's with that that we, I just invite you to turn within as we take a few minutes of meditation. And we move into that place that knows that we are never alone. For I am created in the image and likeness, and already within us is the divine intelligence and its infinite supply. Already within each of us is a divine love that can transform all things. Already within my very being is a peace that passes understanding and a joy and a greatness. It's all present. And so I stand right here in holy ground as an open and available vessel, allowing that grace to move through and as my being. I offer my fears and my doubts and anything that obstructs the glory of this infinite flow, I give it up to God. I examine all of those obstructions and I let them go as I shine the light of truth within them. And so I invite you now as we sit in this few minutes of meditation to open, to feel the free flow of spirit, to surrender that which is no longer needed, and to move into the heart that is filled with gratitude for the beauty and the perfection of God that is everywhere present. And so let us just sit in that beautiful, gracious space for our meditation.
letting go of the things that no longer serve me Yes, I'm letting go I am healed, I am made whole I am healed, I am made whole And so we just turn our awareness into the very center of our being, that sacred sanctuary as we just give thanks. For gratitude is the energy of the activity of the most loving God. For we can choose to see the beauty and the love and the awe that is everywhere present. For it is always there, available, awaiting our awareness of it. And so I bless this awareness I bless this beautiful, loving presence and spirit that lives with and has its being within us. I call it good. For I have a constant companion that loves me, that adores me, that will not let me be hurt, that will guide me and lead me always. And so it's with that that I raise up in gratitude. And so it is. Amen. Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, it feels good. So I'd like to call the ushers forward at this time. This is a time of our service where is our tithe and offerings. It's our opportunities to support this service. You know, this service stands on its own as a self-supporting ministry of CSI. So all of your contributions come forth and support this service and, and then flow into the general funds here. So every, all that your donations come forth, we are in appreciation for it allows us to be able to have this service. So we thank you for that. Thank you, Melissa and Dennis, for this. So as you're preparing this, I just want to move within to a place of gratitude as I say, thank you, Mother, Father, God. For the love that is being shared here is the energy of God. For this beautiful energy has come forth to these individual lives for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to bless it abundantly, to bring forth its good, to caress each of us in its everlasting good. And so I know as we are those vessels of God that we have given great thanks for that blessing that has come before us, and we pass it forth for I know that we become the hands of God that passes it forth to the next individual so that their life is fully blessed. And we stand as these divine circulators receiving and giving and creating more and more good in this world. And so I just recognize this right here and right now. I recognize it from each and every one of you and it's with great gratitude that I say thank you. Thank you for the good that you are sharing and I know it goes forth and blesses many. And so I just allow it to be and so it is. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> when you're down and troubled and you need Nothing seems, seems to be going right. Close your eyes and think of me. Brighten up, even 
your darkest night. You just call out my name and you know. cutest people I've ever met in my whole life, and now I know why. That's awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So we're talking about all this heavy stuff, and I wanted to share with you my brand new, look at how little she is. 
This is my brand new granddaughter. This is Ariel Elaine. Now she came into the world four weeks early, and then she, but through prayer we healed her. She caught that cold that everybody was having and that sickness. So we're, we're kind of keeping her at a distance because she's only been like really not coughing for a couple of days now. Hi, she says hello. Hi to everyone. But I know everyone's, a lot of people have been wanting to see her. So I just wanted to bring her out. She's very cute. Thank you. <laughs> Ariel Elaine. Okay, so you guys do something here where you get an opportunity to take a few minutes to, to make some comments or, or ask a question or something. I understand we have a few minutes to do that. So I guess I should grab this mic. Is there anyone that has a comment or would like to say something? Yes, sir. I just wanted to say welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any other comments? We're clean, we're complete, all thoughts examined, happily flowing, we like that, that's good, that's really good, so great. All right, so I just want to say thank you to all of our wonderful people. Oh, I did to use this one? Yeah, this one, we switch. we just switch. Okay, we switch. Switch a kind of thing. <laughs> Okay, thank you to Jim Bianchi, to Cole, to Sunny, to Wendy, your mom, to Ed and sound, to our practitioners holding the light. We have Cameron and we um, have, um, I just went blank on your name. Denise, I'm sorry. Denise, thank you. And thank you to all of you for being here on all this tonight. So I think it's time for our closing song, right? Sure. Yay. Yay. Do you want this, honey? Okay. You're welcome. How awesome has it been to have Reverend Tammy with us tonight? Yay. Show her some more love. Thank you. And to be blessed by the baby. Aww. Like blessed by the We got blessed by the baby. Yeah. How cool is that? Wow. Okay, Mom. <laughs> she keeps thinking that she's not coming out. Come on. So we're going to sing our closing song and prayer. This is a prayer, a song of peace. We get to be the change we want to see with open hearts and open hands. We lift our voice. This is our prayer, a song of peace. We get to be the change we want to see with open hearts and open hands. We lift our voices in love. So it is. Go forth and multiply the love. Yes. And join us for I'm fellowship so in, the, uh, in the back room. Yeah, yeah. One life living is you and me. One light shining is you and me. One love loving is you and me. God is all there is One life living as you and me One light shining as you and me One love loving as you and me Cause God is all there is I'm shining from the inside out And I'm so happy I just want to shout Woo! One life living 
loving as you and me One light shining as you and me One love loving as you and me Cause God is all there is One light living as you and me One light shining as you and me One love loving as you and me Cause God is all there is Shining from the inside out And I'm so happy Living as you and me, one light shining as you and me, one love loving as you and me, cause God is all there is, cause God is all there is, God is all there is.